good morning and welcome to our service this Sunday. It's the first Sunday after Trinity Sunday. We're entering a period of time in the church called Ordinary Time. And here at the Good Shepherd, we are starting a series on being rooted. Each week, we're going to look at the same reading from Jeremiah, accompanied by another reading to highlight and illustrate what it means to be rooted in Christ. We're going to be thinking about roots and although roots help us to remain firm and to remain solid, roots also provide uh, plants and trees with nutrients and help them to grow and flourish. So I wonder how God will speak to you over the coming weeks about what it means to be rooted. I wonder where you will find your roots. I wonder where your roots already are. And I wonder where your roots will grow over the next few weeks. I hope you've had a good week. I've been away uh, on holiday in Cornwall and it has been wonderful. Not only to take some time away from Carshalton and away from work, but also to spend time in a different part of this beautiful country. Spend time uh, in nature spend time by the sea. I feel like I have watered my roots this week and I'm looking forward to digging deeper and walking with God over the coming weeks. Let's pray as we start. Lord God, thank you that we are a community who is rooted in Christ, growing in faith and fruitful in love. Father, I pray that as we look over the coming weeks at what it means to be rooted, as we dig deeper into this, I pray that you will speak to each one of us. You will show us where our strengths are and highlight where we need to grow. Father God, I pray that as Kevin and I pull scripture apart and reveal it, by your Holy Spirit, that you would make it have meaning and it would help us all as a community. Lord God, thank you that we are a community. Help us now as we come together to worship you. Amen. We meet in the name of God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit, God is one. We come from scattered lives to meet with God let us recognise his presence with us. As God's people we have gathered, let us worship him together. As we wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Our God, you reign forever, our hope, our strong deal.
We come to God as one from whom no secrets are hidden, to ask for his forgiveness and peace. Friend of sinners, you bring hope in our sadness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Healer of the sick, you give strength in our weakness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Destroyer of evil, you bring life in our dying. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the God of love bring us back to himself, forgive us our sins and assure us of his eternal love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The reading is taken from Ephesians chapter 1 verses 3 to 6 and 15 to 23. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ, in accordance with his pleasure and will to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything 
for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. But blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. They will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its root by the stream. It does not fear when he comes. Its leaves are are always green. It has no worries in in the year of drought. For it does not cease to bear fruit. Its leaves are always green. Well, hello there, and it's a good morning from me as well. Uh, Back out here in the garden in between the rain showers today. Uh, It's good to be with you. I hope you enjoyed the Jeremiah reading. Thank you to all those of you who have contributed. It's not too late to contribute if you want to be a part of it. I can always do another one uh, with some extra voices. Uh, It's good. We're going to be hearing that every week for the next few weeks as we explore Jeremiah 17 and what it means to be rooted, growing and fruitful. This image of the tree planted by the stream whose leaves are always green, even in a time of drought. It's such a simple image, isn't it? I wonder how you picture it in your mind's eye, what sort of tree you see. There's a picture of life with God, of the nourishment and strength that God gives. It's on a par with Psalm 23 as such an evocative and simple image. That's why we're going to hear Jeremiah 17 for the next few weeks, uh, read by as many of us as possible. It's why we've adopted this image as describing our church values, rooted, growing and fruitful. You will have heard me refer to this since we launched it in 2019. In full, it describes the whole of church life and indeed our whole lives, of which being church is a part rooted in Christ as we gather to worship, growing in faith through everyday discipleship and fruitful in love through seeking the well-being of our community. I felt that now was the right time to dig a bit deeper down into the first part of that, down into those roots. What does it mean to be rooted in Christ? Sounds good, doesn't it? But what is it? And why do I think it's important? especially in the light of the pandemic, the, uh, the closure of gathered worship for, for most of the last year, without meeting together as a church. What are our roots? Who are we? What are we for? Are we just a dead trunk cut off from its roots? Are we driftwards? Um, or are, are we still rooted, growing and fruitful? The answer The answers, I believe, to these questions begin to come as we think about what our roots are for. As we look around at trees, plants, bushes, what are they for? This isn't a biology lesson, but it's just about the basic purposes. Stability, to keep the tree upright, and nutrients, to keep it fed. The roots of a tree grow down and they grow out, seeking out moisture, water, nutrients. Without those, when drought comes or when the wind blows, the tree becomes unstable, begins to wither or just blows down. The best place to grow, especially in tough conditions, is near a stream. This picture works for us as followers of Jesus. When we hit the proverbial droughts in the hard times, where are, where are our roots? What are they tapped into? How deep have they gone? Jeremiah 17 verses 5 and 6, just before the bit that we read, talk about, talks about those whose roots are not in God, but are in our own strength, who look good in a time of plenty, but in a time of drought, when trouble comes, it's not a lot to sustain them. This is a challenge to us. Many of us, not all of us, but many of us come from environments that prize independence, self-sufficiency, success. 
But when all that gets stripped away, where are our roots? What stream is supplying us with goodness? Where are our values coming from? What are we taking into ourselves through the roots that we have laid down? Maybe right now watching this, you're feeling dry, empty, without normal church as we're used to it. You've discovered that your roots aren't actually that deep. You're floundering a little bit. Maybe you crave a bit more, you crave deeper roots, but you don't know how to do it. Hopefully in this series over the next few weeks in June and July, we'll discover how to do that together. Here's a question. Who are we as a church without gathering? Who are we? It's a big one we never thought we'd face, isn't it? We thought it would just be a hypothetical question, but actually we did face it. Ironically, less than a year after launching our values that said we're rooted in Christ as we gather to worship. But what did we do during the pandemic? What was still important for us as a church community? Why was it that we, with three days notice, created pre-recorded services we could watch together? Why did many of us meet in small groups on Zoom, having never done video conferencing before? Why, why did we make scrubs and cook meals for strangers? Why did we do all those things? Because the character of God and the way that we respond to his character in worship is bigger than the form of our church services. Our roots are in God, not in the church. Take away gathered church and God does not disappear. I say it again, our roots are in God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, not in the church. Church is who we are because of God. God is not who he is because of church. He stays the same. However, we soon discover that although our roots are in God and not the church, if the church wasn't there, we would need to invent it. In fact, people do all the time. There's over 70 different churches in the London borough of Sutton, meeting in church buildings, schools, community centres, homes. Because as a people of God, when we know God, it's instinctive to gather together to worship, to share in our encounters with God. It's instinctive to want to go deeper in our faith, to grow together as disciples, and it's instinctive to want to serve others in the example of Jesus. You can repot the tree in a different environment, but it still needs the nutrients and sunlight and will still grow. So if we, the church, you and I, want to send roots out by the stream, what do we do? Well, you might be pleased to know it doesn't start with doing. It's that old ad adage, you're a human being, not a human doing. So if you feel tired and weary, and you don't want me to tell you that you should be doing this or that and all will be well, then listen on. This is, after all, how Paul starts his letter to the Ephesians, the church in Ephesus. He's writing to encourage them, and he begins by reminding them of who they are in Christ. I want you to imagine uh, with each of these reminders of who we are in Christ that our roots push just a little bit deeper into the soil, taking up just a little bit more nutrients into our trunks. Paul says this, we are blessed with every spiritual blessing. We are chosen before the creation of the world. He sees us as holy and blameless. He has adopted us to be heirs of Christ, to the praise of his grace. Blessed, chosen, holy, blameless, adopted. This is the soil our roots are in. Rich soil, feeding our roots with love and grace, taking those up into our trunks, to our leaves. And when the sun shines on those leaves, bursting with love and grace. The Holy Spirit is like photosynthesis, that transformation that takes place, warming the leaves, tra transforming that love and grace into new life and growth. The tree leans into the light 
the combination of the deep roots and the spirit's work on the leaves. That's what we're talking about. Paul says, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be opened, that you may know the hope to which he has called you, his glorious inheritance and the power of the spirit, that same power that raised Christ from the dead and lives in you. I pray that you may know the hope to which he has called you and to know the power of the spirit who lives in you. To be rooted in Christ begins with this, knowing this, believing this. This is the nutrient rich soil we bury our roots in. When we do that, we take that knowledge deep into ourselves, which means that when times of drought and difficulty come and we're swayed by the wind, we don't need to be anxious. Our leaves are always green. Now, I'm not saying it's easy. I'm not saying it always feels like that. But see, most of us have a low opinion of ourselves, despite what we might present to the world. But being rooted in Christ means being rooted in what he has done for us and therefore in what he has made us into and therefore in what he thinks of us. The sin that we talk about each week in our confession that we repent or turn away from, that's what separates us from God's. That's what makes us roots in poor soil or even poisonous soil. What leans our leaves away from the sun so we eventually wither. But believing in what Jesus has done transforms us because we can begin to see ourselves as he sees us. It's like flipping the lens at the opticians, seeing things in a different way. The theological language is redeemed, saved. We might say restored. This is what happens when we make the choice to root in Jesus, to root in him and what he has done for us. So we are rooted in Christ, not in the church. Our response to being rooted in him, having his nutrients flow through us, is to lean towards him in worship, to grow in faith and to want to change the world around us for the better, rooted, growing and fruitful. And in worship, we don't just come to sing songs or read words about God or to God, but we come to encounter God. That is our hope. It might seem like a big change. It's the difference between coming to church and being church. Church the gathered people of God meeting to encounter him. To do this we need to realise that we need to repent of rooting ourselves in poor soil and instead intentionally choose to root ourselves in Christ. Over the next few weeks, we're going to explore this a bit more, explore what it means, looking at what it means to be rooted in, in Jesus' life, in his resurrection, looking at what it means to grow in confidence in Christ with deeper roots, and finally seeing that God roots himself in us. I hope that you will come on this journey with me and that all of us, me included, will hear this challenge to be deeper rooted but also to hear the restoring sound of what God thinks of us that that comes first that you you are loved you are holy you are chosen you are adopted that God sees you with love and that as we root ourselves in that as we root ourselves in being blessed chosen holy blameless and full of grace we take that into ourselves and we grow strong and tall and green like the trees and bushes around me that you've seen change throughout the seasons and as we go from here we're going to say the rooted growing and fruitful prayer together as we intend and hope to live deeply rooted lives. Let's pray.
strengthen us, we pray, with power through your Spirit, that we may be a people who are rooted in Christ as we gather to worship, growing in faith as everyday disciples, and fruitful in love as we seek the well-being of our community. Amen. Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. God of truth, help us to keep your law of love and to walk in ways of wisdom that we may find true life in Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen.
When I say, Lord, in your mercy, the responses, here are some. Father, creator God, who fashioned the heartbeat of the swallow and the breath of the wren wrapped in frost, hold fast our purpose, our life, in your palm. And may our works upon the earth be your delight and joy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our psalm. Son, born of woman, who dwelt in dew-stained poppy fields and wept in grey grief-laden graveyards, at your feet we lay the weights of love and death, and broken and breathless behold this new Eden craft. Lord, in your mercy, hear our psalm. Wild, iridescent spirit who whistles through the reeds and rushes and warms the hazy honey-golden dusk, the lightness of your call halts upon our thoughts and our rest, our Sabbath soul, on your feral, fertile breath. Lord, in your mercy, hear our psalm. Mother Creator God, who birthed and bathed the blue thrush eggs, and knows by rote its raptured twice sung song. Huddled we seek the grace of aching, listening love, and soothed to psalms of spinning terraquist turquoise earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our son. Son born of spirit, who grew like supple rod of almond trees and lost us in the crush of torrenting temple throng. From the well we draw, so you might know, tarry and thirst, and in being known, seek out to send, sing this Eden song. Lord, in your mercy, hear us up. Still small voice, spirit, seep softly after quake, storm and fire and hold trembling fears in tender, calming grace. Hold fast this wound, this weeping clay, this calling dusk and in that grace decaying flesh restore in Easter's song. Lord, in your mercy, in that harmonious trinity, hear our prayer, be our eternal self. A prayer written by the Reverend Beverly Hunt. Father of all creation, we humble ourselves before you. We come as we are, united by your cross as people of diversity and difference, from different cultures and different ethnicities. We come as one in Christ with different strengths, different gifts and different names. We are your people and you are our God. Help us to follow your example and reach out to others as you have reached out to us and teach us to love one another as you have loved us. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
welcome to Community News. There are a few things to tell you about this week. First of all, there's been some community church family news that has been emailed out this week um, and is also on the bulletin. So please check your emails and also read the bulletin. Um, and if you'd like to get either of those things, if you're not on our church family list, then please do let us know. But check those for important church family news. It's really exciting to see groups regathering and reforming. And so it's a delight to tell you that Coffee and Craft will be meeting this Thursday at 10.15, presumably in church. Um, and Sue is your woman to talk to. If you've taken up craft project during lockdown and wish to continue it, uh, whilst having coffee and um, being with other people, then um, speak to Sue or turn up at church uh, for quarter past 10 on Thursday. Next Saturday, we will be making bubbles, both in groups of six or two households, but also because we will be cleaning church. It is really exciting that our building is coming back into use more and more, um, and we need to give it a jolly good clean. So meet at church at 10 a.m. next Saturday. Uh, you will be given a job. Bring lunch, pray for good weather, and we will sit outside and have lunch um, uh, picnic lunch together um, and we will get the church um, all spick and span ready uh, to receive more and more people as we begin to worship there. If you do come to church uh, on a Sunday um, we will be delighted to see you. It is lovely uh, to see so many people back in church and to feel um, the life coming back into the building. You will be met by one of our hospitality teams and if you stay afterwards, that same hospitality team will serve you coffee um, at a table. Hospitality teams are a new idea um, and at the moment they're based around small groups. But if you're not in a small group but you would like to help uh, join a hospitality team, um, there are plenty of uh, opportunities to do so. Um, so if you want to speak to somebody about hospitality teams, then do speak to me or Kevin and we will make sure that you are included and involved. You don't need any special skills. You don't need any special um, gifts or anything. You just need to be able to be willing to be hospitable. Um, and as we, uh, as we become um, a, a church family in person again, um, just that you would be able to um, be part of that welcome and regathering, reforming uh, in the church. What else do I need to tell you about? Oh yes, the part of our church family that meets on a Sunday afternoon on the first and third Sundays is Families at Four. It's happening today. Uh, so if you are a family or uh, you have primary age children or you're the grandparent of primary age children, then please uh, let me know. We do have some spaces for this afternoon. Um, if not, we meet on the first and third Sundays. Um, an email to church, a text message to me is all it takes. We quite often have spaces um, and with restrictions beginning to ease, we can put bubbles together and things like that. So um, you are welcome to turn up. We should be able to fit you in. Families at Four is a great way to worship um, with adults and children all together. Right, the only thing I need to, last thing I need to tell you about is that there is one birthday this week and uh, it is our very own Peter T. So Peter, happy birthday and thank you for all you do in our community and our church family. Have a great week, Good Shepherd. Um, I look forward to being with you again next Sunday. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>